Well, I'm going to talk about uh, mainly the work that we did as part of our uh, supplemental um, data collection effort. And so uh, talk about the results from the Indiana Shallow Geothermal Monitoring Network. Um, so what we did was we went around um, spots in Indiana with, that were in various uh, glacial settings. And we excavated trenches down to about two meters or six feet, which is a typical installation depth for a horizontal uh, ground source heat pump system. And we installed uh, sensors uh, that allowed us to uh, temperature sensors and soil moisture sensors that allowed us to quantify the temperature, near surface temperature gradients and um, moisture regimes in these settings. Um, so these have a, a strong control and heat exchange um, for uh, these systems. I generated this figure uh, using um, some heat pump design software. And as you can see, uh, thermal conductivities on the y-axis and uh, trench length uh, as part of the design is on the x-axis. So you can see that for a, what seems like a subtle change in thermal conductivity between 1 and 1.5 watts per meter Kelvin, the uh, required trench length changes by quite a bit. So that kind of, that's the rationale behind um, setting up this uh, monitoring network. Um, so we use these, uh, in addition to looking at the soil moisture and the, the temperature gradients, um, we installed Huxaflux uh, thermal property sensor sensors that are designed to be left in the ground and, um, and give you continuous measurements. And so this is the first time that I know of that anyone's used this sensor um, and installed uh, them at depth uh, for the purpose of getting thermal properties um, for ground source heat pump applications. Um, the sensor gives you not only thermal conductivity, but also thermal diffusivity. Um, previous researchers have noticed that uh, the sensor underestimates thermal conductivity so uh, we did some kind of rigorous lab calibrations where we took a, a Decagon a KD2 Pro uh, sensor and measured some standards and um, also some sediment samples that we had in the lab. And we found that the sensor does uh, indeed um, underestimate thermal conductivity, uh, especially in the high end of its range. Uh, but that was okay because we had several um, matched pairs, uh, and we were able to develop a transform equation and for each one of these sensors and uh, get our values up to within 10% of the expected uh, range. So uh, these are some results uh, from a sandy loam uh, site, that's glacial outwash. And so this is an annual cycle and uh, you can see at this site, uh, we measured uh, seasonal changes in thermal conductivity. That's the green line is the cor corrected thermal conductivity value. Um, so we're seeing annual ranges between 0.8 and 1.4 watts per meter Kelvin. And so that would have a huge impact on the uh, length of a uh, loop design. And so near the bottom of that upper plot, you can see the blue line is um, volumetric water content and these fluctuations in conductivity are mainly um, hinging upon those variations in soil moisture. So another way of looking at this, um, these are five of the sites. Um, we've plotted um, it's an XY scatter plot with volumetric water content on the x-axis and thermal conductivity on the y-axis. And you can see that uh, there's a strong correlation and about 50% of the variability is accounted for um, by soil moisture. So uh, this study and, um, is, is kind of summarized uh, on a web page that we have on the, the Indiana Geological Survey's uh, website. Um, we talk about the importance of understanding uh, different glacial or different geologic environments and um, 
and how a heat exchange can and change in, in each of these environments. And then at the bottom of this page, uh, we've got a table, and uh, you can click on the link and go to um, each of the sites and see not only data tables of the uh, continuous data, but you can also look at plots of the uh, recent real-time data. So we've got uh, some additional uh, web content that's come out of this effort. Um, this is a, a web article uh, that I wrote um, that uh, talks about the importance of understanding um, how geology affects heat pump design in Indiana. Um, we've also got a couple peer-reviewed publications that are coming out of this. Um, one paper that kind of summarizes uh, some of the things that I just discussed is currently in review uh, with the journal uh, Renewable Energy. Then we've got another paper uh, that my colleague Kevin Ellett and I are preparing, and we're going to look at upscaling what we've learned um, from this data set um, and see if we can't use uh, topographic wetness index as a proxy for soil moisture regime and uh, use uh, county soils data um, for, from deep horizons uh, to get texture and bulk density. And we're going to look at uh, mapping uh, heat exchange um, on a broader scale, like a statewide scale. So some, uh, some additional work uh, that we've done for the NGDS as part of this project. Um, this more uh, relates to kind of the high temperature stuff. Um, we've uh, we worked with uh, some colleagues from Illinois and from Kentucky to compile bottom hole temperature data for about 26,000 wells. And um, we've, we developed uh, some gradient maps. This is just a 2D um, gradient map that's shown there. Um, but this, was, this work was published in the, an AAPG search and discovery article um, about a year ago. And so um, part of the, uh, part of why we, we did this um, is I've got uh, some colleagues here at the Indiana Survey and, and in, at the Illinois Survey that are doing carbon capture and storage work that's also being funded through the DOE. And so these guys are really interested in, uh, in temperature uh, variations uh, within the, the basin um, because those are, you know, temperature variations controlling the density of CO2, um, which has a big impact on um, your ability to, to capture and store that material. Um, so the, the plot on the right just kind of shows um, how the gradients um, are varying. It's a 3D problem. Um, so uh, the gradients uh, within uh, 600 feet of the surface um, are not following exactly an expected um, uh, gradient. So here I've listed some of the, the data management practices that we've uh, gained as part of this whole effort. Uh, we've improved our capabilities for serving real-time data for sites throughout Indiana. And we've implemented a standard method for attributing geologic maps in tabular uh, GIS formats for public distribution. And um, also, I think the fellow from New, Ham New Hampshire talked about, you know, the pulling out these old paper maps and uh, digitizing them and making them available. That was something we were also able to do in Indiana. Uh, so we've got several uh, maps that are now geo-referenced geo raster images that uh, are available in GIS and uh, for the public. So with that said, what all questions do you guys have? I can't hear. Well, Rick here, I'll, I'll fire out a question. Have you had much interaction with the ground, ground source heat pump industry with your work? Um, not really uh, much feedback from the horizontal folks. I've had uh, some questions from drillers that are putting in vertical systems. Uh, they're mainly interested in depth to bedrock. 
And so that's another thing that we were able to do as part of this study. Um, we've, we're getting ready to, well, we've, we've uh, revised the statewide um, bedrock surface and uh, unconsolidated thickness map uh, that was submitted for the NGDS, and then we're going to publish that separately as part of a survey publication. Um, so that whole effort has helped out in, in, in fielding those questions um, for the vertical applications. Yeah, and I guess the other comment about shallow temperature distribution of if Will Gosnell's on the mine, I'm sure he could help. We, you know, thinking back to his presentation with Minnesota and climate effects, uh, you may want to chat to him in trying to understand the temperature distribution. Okay, yeah, we've got uh, at each one of our sites, we've got a micromet station that we put up too, so we're getting a, a good handle of the um, what's coming in from the from the from a climate standpoint. Hi, this is Lisa. Um, I was real interested in your uh, soil moisture and uh, uh, ex you know in your excavated areas, looking at the variations in thermal conductivity. Uh, how many of those um, two meter pits did you uh, put sensors in? Uh, we, have had, sensors? we had six, we had six uh, excavations and. Um, so each of them we install the sensor at. One of the sites, one of the problems you run into with these sensors is making sure you've got good contact. And I think that's um, that's just an issue anytime you're measuring thermal conductivity. But we had one site where uh, it was a clay rich till and I wasn't able to get a really good contact on the sensor. So um, we've applied an offset for those data, but it's a little questionable. But the, the data from the other five sites are great. Um, so yeah, we've got five sites with continuous thermal conductivity measurements that are still running. That's great. 